and hope you all have a great class. Hi everyone, so my name is Karen. I'm from KarenB.Creations. Uh, and I'm so excited that you guys are here. I'm so excited that you guys are taking hold of your creative journey to learn how to draw flowers. And I will kind of just introduce myself really fast and then get into the project a little bit. So like I said, my name is Karen. I am a mom to three boys and I'm a self-taught artist. I started teaching myself calligraphy when my first son was born and then started drawing flowers after my second son was born just to have more creative outlets as I was being a mom and transitioning there. And I live in Utah, so I saw a few of you guys from Utah here. I saw some people from Missouri, that's where I grew up. So from all over, and I love to see where you guys are coming from. Um, I'm going to um, also share a little bit of the supplies that we're gonna be using. We are gonna be using the mild liner markers. I am using the brush pen tip, but if you guys like the chisel tip better, that's totally fine. I just prefer to draw and color with the brush tip. And I have just a normal, this is one of the zebra mechanical pencils, but if you have a wooden pencil, that works great. Make sure you guys have an eraser if you guys are gonna be drawing live with me today. That way you guys can erase if you need to. And then for my inking, I'm using the zebra um, feud brush pen. I know that zebra has a lot of really wonderful black pens. So if you do not own this one and own a different black pen, that works as well. Um, just a little tip, before you start coloring, just make sure that your ink has dried sufficiently, that way we don't smudge. Um, and now I'm gonna ask for a little bit of patience while I switch to the overhead camera here. That way I can show you guys what we're gonna be drawing and we can get started. All right. And like I said before, my Instagram is at KarenB.Creations. You can also find me on YouTube where I teach, uh, you know, simple flowers or simple floral creations like this. It's Karen B Creations. And of course, thank you so much for Zebra for being here with us as well. And their Instagram is at ZebraPen underscore USA. So I'm going to leave that here so you guys can see. And if for some reason at any point my hand gets in the way, please make sure you mention that in the chat so that I can move the camera a little bit and you guys can be able to see. And so today we're going to be learning how to draw this um, flower bouquet. I chose three different flowers that actually bloom in the fall. So this is a fall bouquet. You know, I love that different flowers bloom in different seasons. So this is what's called a mignon dahlia, a Japanese anemone and a helenium. If you guys have any favorite flowers, I would love to see them in the chat because I'm always looking for more recommendations of what flowers to draw. Um, I'm gonna move this here to the side so I can show you guys a little bit more of my setup here. For paper today, I'm using the HP 30 pound copy paper. This is a little bit thicker, but also super, super soft. So it doesn't fray my brush pens, um, but this is a Strathmore Bristol Smooth, which is the other paper that I love to use when I'm drying flowers because it is really soft. It's also thicker. So if you're trying to gift um, a creation or do a card, the thicker paper works really well. So this is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth that you can find in store there at Michael's. And this is the HP 32 pound paper. And so all of you guys should have gotten that link to be able to download this PDF to be able to follow step-by-step. Step. We will be working through this together and I want to be able to give you guys more insight into these steps, but also like later on, if you guys are not drawing live that you guys can, can do this and be able to follow along. Okay. So I'm gonna move this here to the side. Let me know if you guys can't see it. And I will be starting with the pencil, but once I start actually drawing, I'm going to move to the pen just so that you guys can see a little bit better. But you guys should do this part in pencil, especially the parts that I'm doing with pen, you guys should do in pencil just in case you guys need to erase. And so we're going to get started by drawing our triangle. And so this is going to be kind of the outline for our creation. And so the reason it's a triangle is because this is where all the flowers and the leaves are. We're gonna have our bow a little bit here about two, uh, a third of the way up, and then we're gonna have all of our stems. 
And so you can draw this triangle as big or as small as you want. If you're doing it on a piece of paper, just to practice, you know, maybe fill up the whole paper. Or if you're doing it on a card, it'll be a little bit smaller than this. And then we're going to draw just this next step here. This is gonna be the outlines for our flowers. And so we're gonna start with the big circle one that's gonna be our main flower right here. And it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like mine. Every Mine probably won't even look like the original that I drew, but that's totally okay. So you're gonna do what looks like a donut, a big circle with a smaller circle on the inside. And then we're gonna start with this flower here that looks almost like a gumdrop. And so I try to choose three different flowers with three different views. So here we're gonna have like a frontal view where you can see the full flower. Here we're gonna have a three quarters view, hence the gumdrop. And then this one is gonna be from the side. And so you're gonna have a nice curve on the top and a slower or smaller curve here on the bottom. And then you're gonna have another little gumdrop here kind of close to the center, that will be the center of your flower, uh, surrounded by an oval. And this will be the little tendrils that come off from that circle center of the flower. And then for our last flower, the helenium, we're gonna have a circle, maybe slightly oval like this, and we're gonna give it a little skirt right there. And so this part, I'm kind of going through it kind of fast just because this is just, our layout, this doesn't have to look perfect. You're just gonna use these as guides when you're drawing to make sure that you're not making this flower super big or this flower super small and that it all looks proportional. And then the last one is we're going to do our bow here in the center. And the reason I'm doing the bow already is because I wanna be able to have the place where all the stems are going to meet and that way when I'm drawing the leaves, it's all connecting to the right place. And like you guys can see here, it's okay if these guides leave this triangle. It's just more like a suggestion than an actual rule, right? So once you guys have set up your official drawing, we're gonna get started and I'm gonna switch to the pen so you guys can see a little bit better. And now this is important. If you guys have any questions or you guys need me to slow down, let me know in the chat and that way I can slow down or repeat anything that needs to be done. So now we're gonna to go to the next page of this guide. As you can see here, we're gonna start with flower number one. And this one shows you first the center that will go in this little inner circle. And then we will do what I like to call the guide petals. And these are the petals that are kind of sitting above and they're not overlapping with anyone. So you can see these three right here are the ones that are on top. You can see the complete shape. Therefore, you don't have to draw any complete shape because the one in the back is being overlapped. We wanna do these three first and then continue on with the ones in the back. Okay, so this is the Zebra Feud brush pen. I'm gonna push it in just a little bit more so you guys can see. And what we do for this center is that we're going to draw a bunch of little circles. They don't have to all be uniform. In fact, it's actually better when you're drawing flowers if it's not all perfectly circle or perfectly straight, just because even the flowers look perfect, it's a slight imperfections and differences in each one that actually make it more beautiful to us. And so some of these can look small, some of them are gonna be a little bit larger, maybe some slightly oval, some perfectly circle. It doesn't actually matter. And what I love about this center is that even though it looks really complex, it's not as complex as you think. And it just makes it look a lot more professional looking, a lot more detailed. And it's that detailed look that kind of takes your flowers from doodles to actual illustrations. So I know this is a little bit time consuming, but it is so worth it. And I'm interested to know how many of you guys that are watching live are drawing along with me live or how many of you are waiting for the actual upload so that you guys can pause. So if you guys wanna let me know in the chat if you're drawing with me right now or if you're drawing later, that would be awesome. So I see Nola is drawing live and 
So many of you guys are doing it live. That's so awesome. Well, let's continue then. Okay, once you guys have finished filling up that whole entire little circle of your donut, we're going to do the next step of the center, as you guys can see right here, which are what looks like little finger-like tendrils. And one tip here is to not make them all straight. A few of them can be kind of like a sun ray and be perfectly straight out like this. Um, and this part, I'm drawing it in pen so that you guys can see just because pencil is kind of hard to show sometimes on camera. But you guys, I recommend doing this part in pencil and then inking it before we color. And so I'm doing it in pen so you can see, but you guys should do it in pencil unless you guys feel really confident and wanna go ahead and do it in pen. But like I said, I'm doing it in pen just so that you guys can see it better. Most of the time I would do it in pencil as well just to finish sketching it out. And so these little finger-like tendrils, some of them are kind of leaning to the right, some are leaning to the left. Because this is a top view of the flower, then you guys are, it doesn't, uh, they're not all, you know, they're all kind of going different directions. And so it's not like you guys, like over here, when I show you guys this flower, I'll explain a little bit more with the perspectives than this, the way you, um, sorry, the direction where these fold kind of matters more, but because it's the top view, it doesn't. And so we're just gonna do a few. And then you guys can also overlap them like this, kind of make them hit each other. And they don't have to be too many. Just like this. And it's okay if this part looks a little bit messy. When it's all completed, it's actually gonna look really awesome. And it's actually that intense detail that will make it look more realistic. So there we go. You see here, I overlap these two, but they don't all have to overlap or some of them can even be a little bit shorter and a little bit longer there. You can leave some having a little gap like this just because every once in a while, you know, wind comes and takes part of the center or takes a petal. So once you guys feel like you've drawn enough of those, I'm gonna leave mine like this with just a few little um, gaps like that. And we're going to move on to the petals. And like I said, these are the three guide petals that we're gonna start with. And I want you guys to know that these petals aren't all you know, perfectly rounded. And therefore, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So I'll repeat that. Um, so it's not all perfectly rounded. There's little divots because when you're drawing flowers, it's all made up of C and S shapes. So you can see this is an S, this is an elongated S, here we have a C with a little bit of an S like that. And having those nice little curves make it look more realistic as opposed to the childlike doodles where it's all perfectly rounded. And so we're gonna do the three guide petals on three different sides. So I'm gonna start with this top one. You can see C curve, S curve here, another C curve on this side. And then we're gonna do one on this side over here. You can see they look almost the same, but still different, which is what we want. Maybe I'll make this one just slightly skinnier just to add some variety. And so these are the three guide petals. And from here, we can go on to build the rest of our flower and the rest of our petals, especially the ones that are overlapping behind. And so we're gonna start with this one right here that's overlapping behind this one. And then I'm gonna do this one and I wanna talk a little bit about this fold here. Don't let it intimidate you. It's actually a lot easier to draw folds than you think. And so a nice way to add variety to your petals is to add folds. In this flower, I actually only drew one, but I could always draw a few more. And all you have to do is that along that line that you drew, just draw another little one. There you go, and then you have a fold. I'll draw maybe one more right here to show you guys again. Right there. 
So all I did was draw another line along the edge and there we have a fold. So then we're gonna continue building our petals, making them pretty uniform in size, but like some can be slightly skinnier, some can be slightly fatter, some can have folds, some can have little divots. Like this one's a little bit pointier. And then we're gonna go ahead and move to the last step here with adding the petals. And these are the ones that we're adding all the way in the back. And it's just finishing it off. You guys can add maybe slightly more petals than this if you want, but you don't have to. And you don't wanna make them have too many just because that would make it look like there's tons and tons and tons of layers of petals, whereas this one only has about two or three layers. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit now about the detail lines. This part you can do right now as I'm doing it, or you can wait until after you have uh, inked it and want to do it then, or even after you've colored and want to add it then. I'm going to add them now just so that you guys can see. Um, and I have three main tips when it comes to drawing the detail lines, as you guys can see here. And number one is to make sure that you add a variety in the length of your lines. You don't want them all to look the exact same length because if you do that, then it's gonna to look too uniform and not quite as realistic. So, you know, it's okay, maybe two or three of them are the same length, but you don't, you don't really want that. My next tip is that you add some curve to your detail lines, just because the detail lines are the way that you are showing which way the petal is folding. And so by adding a little bit of curve, like if I, since I'm curving it kind of like this right now, it kind of shows you that it's from the top view and there is some curve, but um, that will kind of come into play a little bit more when I draw the next flower. But if I had drawn them all facing one direction, it would make it look like the petal is curved. And actually I'll do that right here with this fold. So because this fold right here is, I'll zoom in a little bit more on this part, because this fold here, this part is folding inward, we're gonna do all the detail lines here facing the same direction. So you can see they're all curving this way because that is the direction that the petal is going. And so we're gonna go ahead and continue adding the detail lines. They don't have to be perfect. And it's okay if you know you put two that are, like right here, I'll do it, where maybe two are the same length. It's okay if they, there's a few that are, but you don't want them all to be the exact same length. And then my third tip for adding detail lines is to make sure um, to add some, maybe more in the areas that you want to be shaded. So if you draw more detail lines, like little short ones towards the center, that shows that there is more depth here or more darkness. And therefore kind of shows um, a little bit of shadow without actually having to like color it if you didn't want to color it. So I'll repeat those three tips for detail lines. One, adding a variety in the length of your lines. Two, adding curvature to your lines. And three, adding a higher concentration or adding more of them towards the areas that you want to look darker. So that is why kind of towards the center here, I have less just because I don't want this area to look dark and I have a lot more little short ones here towards the center. And then one more little detail um, about dahlias. They usually have kind of like a, a pinch here on the tip of their flowers. And so if you just do two lines kind of like that, it makes it look like there's a fold there, just like a natural little fold in the petal. And so you can actually just go ahead and do all your petals like that. 
and adding little ones. I wouldn't do every single flower this way, but dahlias just have kind of that natural rounded petal. And so by adding those two lines right there, it looks really realistic and really, really pretty. So you guys can see I'm doing those two lines in every single one. Sometimes I add a few more little extra ones, but for the most part, the two main ones are the ones there on the outside. And I am curving my hand just so that I don't have to move the paper around too much on you guys. But on your end, you guys can definitely move your paper where you need to where you need to I don't recommend moving your hand all the way around and curving it because then your lines aren't as much in control so therefore rotate your paper that way you're not rotating your hand as much and this part is definitely the most time consuming when I do YouTube videos I have to speed up through this section just because it would be five, 10 minutes of adding all the detail lines for all the flowers. And so it's okay if you haven't finished the detail lines right now. Like I said, you guys can add the details right now with your pencil, just so you guys have a reference of where you want to add them, or you can add them when you're inking it or after you have colored it. So that is the first flower. Like I said, this is a Mignon Dahlia. It's one of my favorites. Each flower, um, has usually multiple varieties. Dahlias is one that has hundreds and hundreds of varieties. There's some that look like little balls, some that actually have a center um, and different things like that. And they're just so pretty. But this is one of my favorites just because I love the detailed center along with kind of the open flowers like this. So that is the first flower. And I will go ahead and move to the next one. This is called a Japanese anemone. And they are actually really pretty. There's some that are white. There are some that are pink, like a really pretty kind of fuchsia pink. And they're just so pretty. And they have a much different center than this one. So like this one was a lot of little circles in the center plus those little finger likes. Whereas this one actually has these longer tendrils. And don't let it intimidate you. I promise I'm gonna break it down easy for you guys so that you aren't a too nervous about it. And so with this three quarter view, the direction of the uh, where we put the detail lines matters and the direction of where we draw the slenders matters. So as you can see, all of these lines, they're all kind of curving upwards, whereas this one's up here are more straight. And then over here, there's just a higher concentration of circles, just because this one's right, since it's kind of tilted, you're seeing just the top portion. And then on the outside, they're curving up and this ones are a little bit more straight. And so by adding that small, subtle detail, you actually have that perspective made instead of it making it look like the centers from the top viewer, things like that. And so we're going to start with that very little center part, the little dome. And it's just going to be a bunch of little lines. Like, I wish I could make it more fancy, but this is really what it is. And so... You can even do little circles for slightly longer lines like this. And almost like you guys were kind of like little bricks almost. If that makes sense at all. <laughs> um, but the reason I kind of left a little circle on the top is because I'm kind of leaving that as where the, the light is meeting. This is the top of that little dome. And by leaving those little white spaces, it does um, make it look a little bit more 3D. And I do recommend adding a higher concentration here towards the bottom because kind of like with the detail lines, by having that higher concentration, it looks like shadow. And you know we'll add color so we can also add shading there. But and you can even do a little dots like that. Making sure that it looks darker along the bottom just because this part will be in shadow from all those little circle things. And so the next step is going to be to draw what looks like little seeds spread around this little inside gumdrop. And these are kind of sporadic. They don't have to be in the exact same location where I'm drawing mine. You can put some right along that uh, bigger oval that you drew, some inside, some kind of overlap together so they're touching like this or kind of more space. 
Um, but here on the bottom, I'm going to draw more and they're going to be closer to the circle just because you won't really see the stick part of this portion as much as you will from the side. And so kind of just draw a few around as a guide and then you're gonna go and for the next step, you're going to draw a bunch more. And so you can do little groups of three or four, maybe some just two together. It doesn't have to be perfect. Making some, like I said, higher, lower, because you don't want too much uniformity when you're drawing flowers. So here, I'm gonna draw a few more seeds right here. And if you feel like you need to draw or add a few more in a little bit, you can always go back and add more. It's not like it's the end of the world if you only draw a few. Okay. So once, I once you feel like you've drawn enough like this, it comes for the lines. And I'm going to do, because um, this is a brush pen, I'm going to do these slightly thicker just so that you can differentiate these lines from the detail lines. So with the detail lines, I'm not pressing down quite as hard. Whereas for these, I'm gonna press down just a little bit harder to make them slightly thicker and that way it doesn't all mesh together. Okay, so like I said in the beginning, the ones here on the top portion are gonna be a little bit straighter, a little bit more like a sun ray coming out from this gumdrop. And then the ones here that are on the side, I want you guys to add more curvature because these ones are almost like a bowl kind of coming up like this. So try to try imagine the 3D version being in front of you and they wouldn't look straight. So you guys can see almost looks like an octopus with, you know, doing Zen or yoga or something like that. And so here on this bottom ones, they will also be straight, but you're not going to see as much of it. So you don't even have to draw every single line, but just like that. And I kind of feel like I want one more up here. And so by making little clumps of them, you guys can add depth just because it looks like they're overlapped and things like that. So it makes it look a lot more realistic there. Add one more right here. And if you feel like you need to go back and add a little bit more definition to your inside gumdrop, you can go ahead and do that right now. But that's about it. I know it looked really complicated, but hopefully by drawing it with me, you were able to break it down a little bit more and just realize that it's just little simple circles and little lines and just the curvature What is what makes it look so much better. Okay. So the petals of this flower are definitely a little bit more interesting because there's only five of them and it is a three quarter view. And so I'm gonna show you guys here in this square before we go back to that one. And one thing to point out with perspective is that first of all, we place the center slightly more towards the bottom and the back petals are actually gonna look a little bit longer than these front ones but the side ones actually look the longest. And that is because of that side view perspective. And so don't make them all the same length like you did with this flower because this is the top view. And so they're mostly uniform in size. This is a three quarter view. And so the size will vary just a little bit. And so we're going to do the first two petals, which are these two. And it is going to, these are going to be our guide petals. So we build these first and then after that we can build the rest that are overlapping. So I'm going to do this top one right here and once again remember those C and S curves. Don't make them perfectly rounded. That perfectly rounded will make it look like a doodle and not like a realistic flower and so it doesn't have to even be perfect. Just let your hand flow doing that curve right there. And so because these things are in the way, I'm also just going to start on the top of one of these little seeds here. And then, you know, if you can connect it, great, but it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to do this side one, and this one will be a little bit longer than that one. There you go. 
And then I'm going to start with this other one here on the side that will also be one of the longer petals just because of the perspective. You can see it doesn't look quite the same, but that's OK, just because not all flowers are perfect and not all flowers are the same. So even though it's not looking perfectly like the diagram, it's not important. And so these two ones, uh, these two petals here on the bottom, they are going to be slightly shorter than the top one and the side ones. And so keep that in mind. And you should have less space anyway between the gumdrop and your center on this side. Okay, so there is your Japanese anemone and we're going to do the detail lines now, or like I said before, you can wait till the end if you just wanna watch on this part, or if you're still drawing the petals, this is a great time to catch up. And this class is being recorded. So if for some reason you feel like I'm going too fast, you can let me know in the, in the chat, but also realize that this will be uploaded later. And that way you guys can watch it again. And so some of these lines, I'm not starting towards the center because I don't want to take away from these little tendrils here. And so some of them I'm just kind of doing where I can see without making it look too tight. And so this petal, oh, sorry, I started and I forgot to move this up so you guys can see. And so I'm going to now do these bottom ones. And because this anemone, like I said, is from a, a different perspective, these petals here, you can see the detail lines are kind of going more out this way with the way that it's curving. And then we'll just add a few little ones here on the outside. And then this one's kind of going more this way. It's not a super cupped flower, which is why it's not more um, dramatized. So it's just a slight curve in the opposite direction. If it was like a super cupped flower, like a camellia or something, these lines would be definitely a lot more curved to show that they're, you know, it's more closed where this one's slightly more open like this. And then over here, kind of same thing, they're gonna curve similar direction and then kind of meet there. And then this petal here, this one is kind of folding slightly the other way. Um, in the reference picture that I used, that's what it was doing. And I kind of love that these ones are kind of curving this way, whereas this one's kind of curving up a little bit more. So keep that in mind as you're adding your detail lines. So there is the second flower, the Japanese anemone. And all, like I said in the beginning, all of these flowers bloom in the fall. And so I love to, when I'm doing my floral creations, pick flowers that usually bloom around the same time, especially during fall time. Like this is a great, you can do a little card and give it to your neighbor or a friend. And these are flowers that if they went on a walk, you know, depending on where they live, they might see some of these. Okay, so the third flower, is the helenium. And this one is actually really fun and probably the easiest of the flowers that we're going to draw, especially the center. It kind of looks like a big brain because all you have to do is do little snakes and curves and just kind of have fun doodling this part. It doesn't have to look perfect in any way. And the most important thing is adding that higher concentration towards the bottom because this part will be the darker one. When we do add color, we will make that part slightly darker as well, but this is nice to do it with um, with your pen. And it can look, you know, slightly like a, more like a gumdrop, an oval or a circle, just depending on what you're wanting. I think I might change mine to kind of be slightly more pointed and less circle, but you guys can do pretty much whatever. And so just start literally doodling as if you would in your, elementary school notebook. And, you know, we'll start, I'll do the little lines here so you guys can see where you need to keep it inside of. But just curves, little S's. It's like kind of a childish technique, but I love that in the end, each of the centers looks so different, yet so realistic. 
just because every flower is so different and they all give so much beauty to the world. So that's like the first layer of squiggles. So you guys can see the darkness looks the same or the shade kind of looks the same throughout. So I want to add a few more kind of along the bottom part here. That way it looks darker like that. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I think this one has slightly too much white space. I'm gonna add just a few more here, making sure that it's close there. So lots of little squiggles. And now we're going to do the guide petals once again. So as a reminder from the beginning, um, this are the guide petals. These are the ones that sit above and are overlapped. And the reason I like to start with these is because you can draw the complete shape and you don't have to stop, you know, right here because it's overlapped with a different one. You draw the complete shape and from there you build out the rest of the petals. And the helenium is a really pretty flower and the leaves, or sorry, the petals are really fun. They kind of go out like a little bit of a skirt, have a lot of folds, and sometimes some of the petals are shorter, sometimes they're longer. And so it looks a little wacko, but it's gonna look really pretty, I promise. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the center one right here. You know, and you can just add some curves. And so this one, the curves are definitely slightly tighter than maybe the other two were just because sometimes these ones have slightly sharper folds or maybe the wind has come because a helenum is a wildflower. And so sometimes the wind comes and takes off a piece of the petal. And so by adding this little divots right here, you kind of give that illusion, which I love. And that, that's actually one of the reasons why I love to draw with the Zebra Feud brush pen because brush pens, right? The way they work is that if you put more pressure the lines are thicker. If you put less pressure, the lines are lighter. And so even just in this petal, you can see right here, this one's slightly lighter. This is slightly darker. So it's even slight imperfections in my lines, which I feel like make my flowers look even more realistic. And so that's why I love to draw with the brush pens. But I know some people really do love their fine liners. And I have fine liners that I love, but this is definitely my go-to pen. So 1010 recommend. Thank you, Zebra. Okay, so now we're going to do our last guide petal here, kind of make it skinnier on the top, like that. And then from there, you'll build the rest of your, your petals. And the ones that are, like this guide petal was definitely the shorter one. And then the ones on the bottom are definitely gonna be a little bit longer just because this one, this petal, the reason it looks slightly shorter is actually also because of perspective. It could be that it's the same length, but because of the way we're drawing it, you're only, it's kind of curving up a little bit more. And so you're seeing just this portion, whereas the ones that are on the bottom might be bent down a little bit more and you can see more of their length. And so we'll do the, add that here. We'll add this longer one right here. Oh, sorry, I'm showing this square. We're back in this square. Where am I bad? And then right here, we'll add this one. And then you can see here that there is a partial petal because this um, these petals, they go all the way around. If you were do the, to do the top view, it might look similar to this, but because we're doing the side view, you're only seeing the side of the center and then one side of the petals. There is a whole nother layer on the other side. And so we're just going to draw a partial petal right here. So this is not a fold like these ones were. This is another petal that it's on the back side of the flower. Okay, we're going to add just a few more petals here to complete our flower. And then another kind of semi-partial one and then another partial one here. And so you guys can see I did tuck these in up a little bit more because these ones, we don't want the length of these to be the length of these, just because these are the ones going along the backside of that flower. And so now we're going to add the details. And this one's you can make sure that you guys add a lot more short ones towards the center. 
and then towards the outside. It's good to have maybe a detail line along these little divots here, just because that shows those folds a little bit better. And so where there's a little divot, you can add a little line. It's kind of like the perfect placement. And so these ones out here, I'm going to curve the detail line just a little bit because these ones are curving over. Whereas this one, they look a little bit straighter just because of the way that we're seeing them. And so the farther out you go here on the side, add just a tiny bit of curve. So like, I'll show you guys right here. You guys can see there's, it kind of curved upward because this is the way the petal is folding. And I like to think that detail lines are actually really forgiving with the side view flowers because you really can't go wrong where you add them just because they're all pretty much facing the same direction. All right, how are you guys feeling? Are you guys feeling pretty comfortable with the flowers that you drew? You guys can let me know in the chat if there's any one of these flowers that you guys liked best, but if you guys have gotten this far, you guys have drawn three different flowers from three different perspectives, which is just so awesome. And I'm pretty sure that they look amazing. So once again, this is the Mignon Dahlia, the Japanese Anemone, and the Hellenium. And don't worry if you're terrible at drawing the petals. It all takes practice. I've been drawing flowers almost every single day for the last three years. I kind of started in COVID, right before COVID. And so it's okay if you feel like you need more practice. It's definitely something that is fun to do if you just have a notebook or a napkin or something, you can pick up a flower or you know look up a flower on your phone and, and practice there. But you know, some of the tips that we studied that we talked about before. So adding those curves, the C and S curves in your in your petals, having a detailed center, adding those little divots on your petals, all of those are gonna take your flower doodles to the next level to make them look more realistic like this. And so don't worry if you're not super happy with them right now, since you've done it in pencil, you can always go back and erase some parts if you feel like you need to, but you guys are learning and working hard and that practice is gonna pay off. My favorite saying is actually that practice makes progress, not practice makes perfect, just because the more you practice, the more progress you're gonna have in your drawing and everything else. Okay, so the next step is actually not a flower. So if you're feeling a little bit intimidated by the flowers, we're gonna take a step back and do a ribbon. And don't worry, <laughs> this is probably slightly easier. In my opinion, it's slightly harder just because I don't draw bows quite as often, but I try to break it down pretty, pretty well for you guys. And so we're gonna start with the center. It looks almost like a little pumpkin or an apple. You want to make sure that you have like little divots here just because when you, you know, when you tie a ribbon, the little center part gets tightened the most. And so it kind of goes in a little bit. So I'm going to push my paper up a little bit more. Um, a few of you guys have been asking for the link to this pages. Uh, Danielle from Zebra Pen has been adding the link occasionally there for you guys. And so if you don't have it, um, she just posted it again in the chat. So you guys can look for it there. But this also should uh, was with the link for the class. So um, we're going to start now with the bow and we're going to do the center first. So kind of do a little apple or pumpkin. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? So little scrunchy apple there. And you're going to do little detail lines, but kind of along those areas where you tightened it a little bit more and want them to be up and down just because that's where the ribbon is kind of folding or being tightened. And then we're going to do what looks like little dog ears, but making them long and slightly curved. Don't make them look perfect. So slight curve there, right? It goes thinner. And we're gonna do this side. And it doesn't matter if they're not the same length, right? I can never tie a perfect bow anyway. And so if they're different lengths on the different sides, it's probably more realistic anyway. And so from here, this is going to be 
So when we draw the rest of this triangle, this is the outside portion of the ribbon and this is the inside portion. So this side or the inside right here needs to be more shadowed. And the way I did that was just by doing little lines, nothing fancy. You can do crosshatch, you can just do little stripes. You just want to darken that part so that it looks like the inside of the ribbon that's in shadow. Right? And so from there, we can move on to the next step, which is drawing the rest of the triangles. And once again, we can't escape those C and S shapes. So there we go, curving it like that along those triangles. So we can start here, curving it a little bit like that. And then over here, and then you have the top portion of your bow. And then we're going to add some lines, making more of them here towards the center. And then a few here along the edges, especially during in those areas where you put a little divot like that. So, so I guess there is quite a bit of overlap between ribbons and flowers, more than I thought now that I'm talking through this out loud. Definitely lots of detail lines and curves. So there it is, pretty simple bow, but by adding those little lines and curves, it makes it look more realistic as opposed to just having a perfectly rounded or squared off bow. And so this next part might look a little bit different. And so we are a little bit more difficult, but it's actually not that bad. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to do one long line like that. And then another one on this side, curving pretty much wherever you want your bow to curve. And then for the next part is your, you're going to draw another line and then just cross them and then meet at the bottom, just like that. And then kind of do little triangles here on the bottom. And then you can add a few detail lines kind of along those areas where they meet the other parts. So because we are kind of running out of time, I want to speed up the next portion a little bit. Um, we might not get to fully color in all of them, but I want to color at least one. So I want to go ahead and do the leaves. And so with the leaves, if you guys have the instructions, right, the biggest thing that I want to point out um, is that you want to have leaves that are above that little line and some that are behind just because if they're all coming from the stem, it doesn't look quite as realistic. So you wanna make sure that you draw some leaves along the top of that line and some that are behind. And so with the pencil here, right, I'm just gonna draw where I want my leaves to be. And I kind of drew that here as well. And we're gonna draw two different varieties. So here's one variety. Um, and I like to overlap where I put them just so that it adds um, some differences. And so this way now, now that I've drawn the line, I can go ahead and draw a long. So we're going to start with the long leafy one. And this ones don't have to be perfect at all. Just start drawing little leaves, making some go behind, some go in front, a longer stem. You can draw part of your stem like right here and then draw another leaf and then kind of keep building it up. It's okay if it doesn't look, you know, amazing or anything like that. We're not getting fancy right now and drawing a lot of folds or anything in the leaves just because that's a whole nother class, I think. A little bit more of the stem here. Maybe a small leaf here or there. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna do this back one to be the exact same type but you see that they're all kind of behind. So you're not really seeing as much of it. So you don't actually have to draw as much leaves. We'll draw like right here, as if there was some over there. And then maybe some right here, kind of go up. And the second variation is um, these kind of thicker ones. And so you're gonna do the exact same thing as you did where you might draw the beginning part of the stem and then draw just a fatter leaf. And by adding the vein in the center, you're kind of adding that variety. So 
like this one will make it go behind the flower. You can't really see it. And then up here, we'll kind of continue the stem. And don't stress about the leaves. By adding these leaves, you're actually making your bouquet look a little bit more full. You can also add maybe like a smaller um, variety of flower if you wanted to, but it doesn't have to be fancy. So I'm just gonna do this part quickly so that we can, I can show you guys how to use the Maya liner because this is some of my favorite ones to color with. And they're just so fun, especially because I like to layer the colors. So here we're finishing the stem. Maybe adding another one right here. And so once you're done with that, you'll also draw the stems of your flowers and making sure that they all connect into your um, bow right here and then make it go through. So all the the leaves and everything. You can even just draw a bunch of them, but you know, sometimes the leaves will hide those stems. So it's okay if you don't see all of it, just remember where you put them so that whenever you're ready to color them, you're coloring the right way. Okay, so here I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit more to kind of show you guys the finish in piece. And so when you guys on your own time, just because we're running out of time, you guys will ink it and color. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the pencil lines right there so that we can color. And like I said, I love using the mild liner brush pens. And one of the reasons I like to use them is because they're super mild in color. So once you draw, it's not like all so dark that you can't layer the colors. Just because by layering the different colors, you're able to add that variety. And so I'm gonna pull out the original version that I did to kind of show you guys the color palette that I chose, which is right here. And so I'm going to do the Helenium here with this two oranges and the, you guys can see the name of the color here. So this is the orange and this one is the apricot color. And then for the center, we're using this browns, which is the, the beige and the copper. And so for the center here, right, I'm going to do one layer of this lighter beige color like that. And then with this darker copper color, you can add it to those areas that you want to be slightly darker. It's okay if it's not all the complete color. I kind of went out of the lines there a little bit, but making sure that you add that slightly darker color towards the bottom right here. And so I'm gonna show you now how I like to layer these two colors. And so they're both, you know, two different shades of orange. And I like to start with the lighter color. So this is the one that's actually labeled orange and this is the mild liner brush. And so I like to, first of all, draw lines along the direction of my petals where my detail lines are going. I don't like to, you know, I don't wanna go this way just because the marker itself will add natural detail lines and you don't want to have lines that you're adding in a separate direction. And it's okay if there's some white patches because flowers naturally have those highlights, right? So I colored all of it the same light color. And then with this darker color, I'm not going to color all of it. I'm mostly going to do kind of where my detail lines are and maybe even the edges. So kind of like right here, adding it along those detail lines here. And then here, this back petal, definitely adding more along that area where I want it to look darker. Kind of being a little bit more light-handed with this darker color because you don't want to completely cover the, the other one. And just adding these two different shades of the mild liner helps create that highlight and uh, the darker ones as well. So like I said, this back one, I'm gonna make a little bit darker. And then maybe this back one, I'll color all the dark orange or the, sorry, the apricot color, just because it's more in shadow, you're not seeing as much of it. 
but pretty much just go over the areas where you're adding the detail lines like that. And so that is the darker color. Um, I will, for this flower, I actually used this lighter colors. Um, these are not the brush kind, these are the chisel tip, but this is the, sorry, I'm reading it upside down, the cream. And I like the cream because it's almost like a white, like um, this flower that I chose was a white color. And so you can see it's definitely a lot lighter. And so I actually, sorry, I didn't even use the, the beige, my bad. For this Mignon Dahlia, I only used the cream. And then once this kind of had a little bit of a chance to dry, I went through and added another layer in order to make it slightly darker, as you can see, and kind of add that depth like the orange, the darker color did. Hey, Karen, before we run out of time, I did want to let you know that there are so many people that are enjoying your um, class as well as your lessons and your handout. Well, thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you guys have joined in and are liking it. Um, this, uh, If you guys are interested, I do teach more classes on my YouTube. Um, not quite as long as this one, of course, but I, I wish I could stay longer with you guys and to be able to completely finish this drawing with you. But the handout will give you guys um, the guidance that you guys need to be able to finish your creation on your own time. But thank you so much for joining and for, for loving the class. Um, just one more tip before I finish, when we run out of time, is for the leaves. So for the leaves on this picture, I'll show you guys with the finished one. You guys can see that there's two different colors and there are two different color mild liners. However, for this long skinny one, I only used this lighter one, the green. But then for this darker ones, I actually layered them both. So I used the green and then used this slightly bluish teal, which is called the summer green, to kind of outlining it. And by just because of color theory, it does lessen the bluish tint of this one to give it this nice darker green as well. And so I am so grateful that you guys have been on this class with me. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. You guys can follow me at karenb.creations on Instagram or follow my YouTube at karenbcreations. And of course, thank you to Zebra Pen for hosting this class and Michaels as well for, for hosting the class. And thank you so much. And I hope that you guys join for the next one. Thanks, bye.